Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to the Very Vera Show. You know, this time of year, I know everybody's in the same boat. What casserole am I going to make during the holidays? Or even just to get started with some of those fall feelings with great vegetables. So needless to say, squash is so versatile. It's so welcoming in any table this time of year for what recipes you're going to be doing. So I kind of scratched my head and thought, what could I do that would be a little bit different introducing squash back into your menu planning for the fall. So I've got three recipes we're doing today. I'm going to do Rebecca Lang's Down Home Southern Squash Souffle. I'm going to do Martha Stewart's Butternut Squash Mac and Cheese. And we're going to do Sarah Foster's Roasted Butternut Squash and Blue Cheese recipe that is absolutely fantastic with grits. So we are gonna have quite a bit to do, so I hope you'll just get relaxed because we're gonna get started on these recipes. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is get started with the second recipe I'm doing because we're making some grits. So the most wonderful thing about my new Wolf induction cooktop is that if I want this water to boil, all I've got to do is hit boost and it is like there in a minute. Just really gets really hot really quickly. So I've got water, hot water, you see that? Look at that, unbelievable. It just gets hot so quick. So I've got my uh, yellow grits measured out. I'm gonna add those in. A little salt, kosher salt and black pepper. And I'm just gonna whisk those around and then turn this down to a simmer. Those will just be cooking along while we get started on Rebecca Lang's recipe, which is a summer squash, which can either be yellow squash or zucchini squash. So um, the squash this time of year in the fall is still really tender. Um, you can pick this up at the fresh market. You know, if your roadside stand that you love is already closed for the summer months, um, I love to recommend that you try that first and then if it's not available, go to the fresh market. And the bigger pieces I want to cut in half, but I've got my water boiling over here in my Dutch oven with a steaming basket because when you're cooking squash to maintain that nice freshness and some of the uh, vitamin content there. You don't want to boil the squash to death. You want to steam it so that it's just tender. Um, the bigger pieces may be cut in half, but get that going. We're going to cook that just until tender, which will probably be about 10 minutes in my Dutch oven. So now all of the things that go in um, Rebecca's casserole are so great. And this actually reminds me of my days in catering when I would be putting together menus. And you know, we all say Southern squash casserole, but if you call it a souffle, then suddenly you can charge five more dollars a person for, the, for catering because you've got a very fancy name put to it. So, you know, use your creativity. Just because it says souffle doesn't mean it's made with egg whites. So I've got some sour cream, mayonnaise, kosher salt, and I'm just kind of mixing that together really well. And then before we came on the air, I cooked my onions and got those nice and sauteed. And this is where sometimes you can make a few changes to a recipe that won't alter it, but will kind of make it your own. So instead of butter, I actually sauteed these onions in a little bit of bacon drippings. So it adds a little bit of a different um, taste to the recipe, and I love it. So we're gonna mix that in. And then to get this all ready to go for the show, I went ahead and cooked my squash ahead. So I'm gonna add that in. And then I've already cut up my Ritz crackers, and I've already grated my cheddar cheese. So anything that you can do ahead so that putting it together at the last minute makes it go quickly is always great. So I'm gonna mix this up, add in my cheese. I've already sprayed my nine by 13 pan, add my crackers in, and a little bit of cream. Heavy cream, by the way. So Southern for sure, 
mixed up and it's going to go in a 350 degree oven. So come back with us after the break. I'm going to get started on my next squash casserole recipe, which is going to be unbelievable. Come back with me in just a few minutes. Welcome back, everybody. And if you're just joining me, I'm doing my favorite squash casseroles today. Three different recipes, and we actually just finished Rebecca Lang's Southern, Down Home Southern Squash Souffle. And you know, one of the things that I love about this recipe is the fact that it uses mayonnaise, my Hellman's mayonnaise, and then Ritz crackers, 36 crushed Ritz crackers go in this casserole, which makes it very buttery and very sweet. So if you're looking for a different squash casserole to use during the holidays, I really hope you'll try that one. And as always, our recipes are available at VeryVera.com. All right, so I had my grits going for this recipe during the first segment, and they got all the way done. And then I've slowly added whole milk just to get them good and creamy. And this is where that wire whisk, just beat those grits half to death and get them nice and creamy. So now I'm gonna add in butter and rosemary. Now, do you just love the sound of that to grits? I mean, it's just a spice that you probably would have never dreamed of putting with this. So this is Sarah Foster's recipe, and Sarah is from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and is somebody that I would actually love to have uh, join us at some time on the show because her recipes are so Southern, so unusual, just like this. And then we're gonna add to this um, Parmesan cheese. So this is where, at this point, even if you weren't a fan of butternut squash, which hopefully after you see the finished product on this, you're gonna absolutely wanna try this recipe. But um, this would be great for any one of your um, grits recipes that you do, whether it's shrimp and grits, or even if you did just like fried pork, with this, with that rosemary, would be so good. So I'm gonna let that rest just a minute, and we're gonna talk about the butternut squash, the roasted butternut squash. So one of the things I want to certainly suggest is that when you're doing this, you need to be patient, take your time, use a sharp knife, and don't get in a hurry, because you can, this is a hard, hard vegetable, and you wanna make sure you take your time. So you wanna peel it with either a very sharp paring knife or a very sharp wire vegetable cutter, like a, pear, a carrot peeler. And then um, the seeding of it is can be done with a spoon or with a melon baller. I really like to use a melon baller because it has kind of a sharp edge and will get those seeds out quickly. And then when it's time to cut it, you wanna cut the butternut squash because it's kind of long and lanky. You wanna cut that in half so that you've got a flat surface to work with. And then again, use pressure and use a sharp knife and take your time. Um, I'm just cutting just about a half inch slices on these. And we're gonna roast these on a baking sheet with a little bit of olive oil and kosher salt. All right, so this is just an unusual um, difference to a recipe. The thing I love about this is how these butternut squash are gonna caramelize when they bake. My convection, my double bake convection oven that I'm using is one of the ways that I'm gonna really utilize that today is because I've already got my squash in the oven and I can go ahead and put this in there at the same time because the convection heat is coming in from the back. So my M-series double convection oven from Wolf is really gonna come in handy today. All right, so I'm gonna sprinkle these with a little bit of kosher salt, get that in the oven, and when we come back, we're gonna get started on Martha Stewart's version of her recipe with butternut squash that is a macaroni and cheese recipe. So come back with me in just a few minutes. Vera's Corner is brought to you by Georgia Bank and Trust and Southern Bank and Trust. Squash is one of my absolute favorite vegetables and it's actually very versatile many times during the year. So today we're gonna go over five different types of squash, how to use them in cooking and what they're best to use for. 
butternut squash is the most common winter squash and it pairs well with bacon, cinnamon, and balsamic vinegar. Spaghetti squash is stringy. It pairs well with tomato sauce, making it pasta-like. Acorn squash is much smaller and is great for roasting. Summer squash is more tender than most other squashes. It can be eaten raw or cooked, and zucchini is a summer squash. Pumpkin, not only great for carving, but is also great for pies, breads, and roasting. Hope you enjoyed Squash 101. Welcome back everybody and if you're just joining me I was putting that butternut squash in the oven to roast for just a little bit and one of the reasons I love this double convection M-series wolf oven is that you can put more than one thing in the oven at a time and so you know the squash was about ready to come out and I knew it immediately because it was so nice and golden brown on the top it cooked in exactly the length of time the recipe said so I'm so excited about that. All right, so we're gonna get started now with Martha Stewart's twist on macaroni and cheese using butternut squash. So ahead of time, I went ahead and cubed the butternut squash, got that in a saucepan. Now I'm gonna to add to that a little bit of chicken broth and milk and let that boil until it's tender. And so that's what I've gone ahead and done. And now I'm just gonna take good old fashioned potato masher and we're just gonna mash all of this up. And this is when, you know, just any little thing that you can do ahead of time, like I've already gone ahead and cooked my elbow macaroni. If for some reason the night before you're cooking dinner and you can get that done ahead, that can just be covered and put in the refrigerator. All right, so just as your preference would be, whether you want it to be really good and mashed up or whether you want to have some chunky pieces, just get it to the consistency that you like. All right, so we've got some great spices that are going in here. We've got some ground nutmeg, fresh nutmeg, cayenne pepper, salt, and regular black pepper. So let's stir that about. All right, so now I'm gonna add in this elbow mac macaroni. And again, just cook this just until it's not quite done yet because it's going to, to bake. So I'm gonna get that mixed in. And with that, we've got three different cheeses. And I'm really tempting you guys to try these recipes available at verivera.com because I know good and well nobody's ever thought of putting squash and macaroni into a macaroni and cheese dish. This just sounds wonderful. All right, so now I've got Parmesan cheese, ricotta cheese, everybody's just going, mm, that sounds so good, and then freshly grated cheddar cheese. And I've gone ahead and sprayed my casserole dish. And you know, because these, if you've got a bowl that's big enough, this is one of those things, make one, keep one, and give one. So double this recipe and have one to take to somebody if you need to at the last minute. Just have something available. This freezes well. And I can already, you know, I can smell all this, but one of the things that I love when I'm gonna spend the day in the kitchen is Fresh Market has the greatest variety of flavored um, candles, scented candles with, and this one is actually verbena and cedar that I love. And um, one of my, staff members when she was interning with me, Emily Yates, she would come to my house a lot because we were doing a lot of the testing at home. And uh, when I lit the candle today, she said, that reminds me of my internship. So, you know, those wonderful smells and fragrances that remind us of certain times of the year, you know, can be part of your home too by just picking up something quick like that when you're in the store. All right, so I've got some Parmesan cheese and you can mix these together or add them separately. And then just some breadcrumbs. So different things for different casseroles, like Ritz crackers went in one, we're putting um, you know, just breadcrumbs on the other. And when we come back from the break, we're gonna talk about presentation, because you know that's one of my favorite parts. 
how to get creative in your presentation, and then how to make sure that everything is hot and ready all at the same time. So come back with me in just a few minutes and we'll get it all together. Welcome back everybody. And I actually recently had a viewer write in and say my favorite part of the show is the presentation at the end. And that made me so happy because as a former caterer, certainly I was involved in the menu planning. We got in the kitchen and determined, you know, what pieces we were going to pull out of the attic to use for things. But I was in my element when I got to the event and I got to start laying it all out and I'd start thinking, you know, there's something else up in the attic that we could use to make this table look complete. So I've had quite a lot of fun determining how we would do this borrowed squash segment today for this episode because borrowing recipes brings me in touch with some of these folks that have been so good to me. These cookbook authors that have presented their magic with me on TV and have also helped me explore changes in recipes and things to do differently through their beautiful and wonderful cookbooks. So I'm very fortunate to have had the opportunity today to share these three books that are so amazing, three recipes that I actually love dearly, and introduce you to some changes that you can use with recipes that you're doing this fall. All right, so the squash casserole, Rebecca Lang's um, the squash casserole down home, I cooked in just a plain seven by 11 inch Pyrex dish. You know, it's beautiful, it looks great, but wouldn't it be unbelievable if you could put it in a container that was a little different? So I just took it and used my, I have a collection of vegetables that are oven to table. I absolutely love these. I use them for cold things as well as hot. So I've just taken a spoon and transferred very carefully the casserole to the dishes. And actually, they look pretty good right now, ready to go. This allows you, if you're doing a double-sided buffet, where you can have it on both sides, and even family style at home, this would work well. But if you're not very satisfied with the way that the transfer did, just always leave a little bit of extra of your garnish so that you can just put a little bit of that on the top so that it looks like it was intended to be there from the very beginning. So I love the way that looks. All right, so I've taken the butternut squash and I've made a flower arrangement with it today. Just love this. So I found one that just sat perfectly straight on the table. I cut off the top and then I used my melon baller and just hollowed out enough space in the center so that I could do my flowers. And then I just picked up a small bouquet and just made it mine, went outside, found some greenery, and just have a really beautiful flower arrangement that goes well with what we're doing. Okay, the mac and cheese got transferred to my gorgeous big zucchini that I absolutely love. Same thing again, if you don't like the way it turned out on the top, just save some of your garnish there on there. Now, butternut squash was the star of the show today, and I've actually had a couple of other guests on the show before that did squash. I had um, Virginia Willis was on with me, and we did a butternut squash and kale dish that was fantastic. And these recipes are also on our website at verivera.com. And then Jamie Keating from Columbus came on and did a butternut squash soup that I have done very often. I love that one. So check that one out as well. So I've got the grits in my casserole dish. Remember when you're transferring to a casserole dish that you're not baking in, go ahead and spray it because cleanup is a nightmare if you don't. So I've just added these caramelized butternut squash to the top. And now I'm going to sprinkle this with a little bit of blue cheese. And this is what this the combination of flavors in this, if this does not make it to your Thanksgiving buffet, I'm, I'm coming to your house. We're going to have to do something about it because this is fantastic. Just so different. You will be the one person in your family that has come up with something that's completely unbelievable this year to serve. All right, so your standard pie, um, casserole holder, whether it's silver or pewter or whatever it is, you know, looks great, but we're trying to go over the top here on the Very Vera Show. So this is where you get the kids involved. Find something that they can cut out, make fall leaves out of it, and bring a real splash to the presentation for your buffet. Well, as I always say on the Very Vera Show, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. 
and I don't want to say that that one is my kind of favorite, but right this minute I'm in the mood for grits. So I'm going to try a little bit of this. Would be great for a brunch coming up. So no matter what you do, do it in good taste. Come back and join me again next week for the Very Vera Show.